So, welcome again uh, in my course power electronics application in power system. In last few lecture, I discussed different types of static power compensator. Now, what is static power compensator? It is a kind of power electronic based uh, reactive power compensator which can be used to absorb the reactive power from the system which also can be used to deliver the reactive power into the power system. Okay. Now, uh, this is a kind of uh, uh, reactive power compensation and this facilitates various, various aspects of power systems operation in an efficient manner. Okay. So, in this particular lecture, I will start uh, the next module which is uh, the application of static bar compensator in power system. Okay. And uh, basically, I will discuss that uh, in which way the application or usage of SBC can uh, be helpful in power system operation in an efficient manner. Okay. So, let us proceed. So, the topic of this lecture is SBC in or rather SPC applications in power systems. Okay. So, there are various applications of SBC in power system, I will uh, discuss them in one by one. So, what are the first application? So, what uh, SBC can do is, SBC can increase the steady state, steady state power transmission capacity. So, I will show you uh, in, in comparison with an uncompensated line, a SPC compensated line can enhance the power transmission capacity of the transmission line. Okay. So, this is what the application of SBC in steady state uh, behavior. So, SPC can also be used in uh, dynamic aspect of power system, in specially it can enhance or it can increase the transient stability. So, SBC can increase the transient stability of power systems. So, this is the application of SBC in uh, dynamics. Okay. Now, SBC can be used in damping power system oscillation, power system oscillations, which is very important applications of SVC. I will discuss this in very detail. This is again uh, the, the application of SVC in dynamics. Okay. And lastly, but most importantly, SVC is used in voltage control, voltage control of power systems, power systems. In fact, this uh, last application I will discuss in very detail in a different module in uh, the latter part of this uh, lecture. Okay. So, uh, these are the possible application of SBC. We will start with the first you know application of SBC that is to increase steady state power transmission capacity of a power system. So, let us write that SBC in enhancing steady 
steady state power transmission capacity. Now to understand that we will take two different systems. One is an uncompensated transmission line, another is a compensated transmission line. Okay. Now suppose this is a representation of a short transmission line connected to a infinite bus. It is a kind of single machine infinite bus system where this voltage is represented by V1 at an angle delta. This voltage is represented as V2 at an angle 0 that is the reference voltage. So, we assume that our assumption here is our assumptions here is that uh, la, this line is lossless which we use to take. Then second is it is a kind of short line, short line. Okay. So, these are our two assumptions. So, here this is a uncompensated, uncompensated La transmission line whose reactance is considered to be x. Okay. So, x is the reactance, x represents reactance of the line. Okay. Now, we also take another case where we, we have a compensated midpoint compensated transmission line. Here, this is a midpoint compensated line. So, here suppose this is the sending and voltage similar to this uh, uncompensated line, it is represented by V1 at an angle of delta, and this is the infinite bus bar to which this line is connected this voltage is V2 at an angle of 0. And at the midpoint of this, we have a SVC connected. Okay. So, this uh, divides this transmission line into two part and uh, the reactance of this two half of the transmission line is represented by half of the total reactance of the uncompensated line. So, this is the midpoint where the voltage is Vm and the angle is as we know it is some, some there would be some angle. Uh, if we consider that the line to be symmetrical that is V1 is equal to V2, then V m would be equal to delta by 2, uh, V m angle of V m would be delta by 2. But let us consider this is having uh, an angle which is uh, delta by 2 considering that it is a symmetrical lossless short transmission line model. Okay. Now, uh, what would be the expression of power uh, for this particular case? Already we have de uh, derived for this particular case since the line is lossless. So, the uh, expression of power, active power would be equal to V1 V2 divided by x multiplied by sin delta. Okay. Now, if we consider V1 is equal to V2 is equal to V that is symmetrical line that is symmetrical line symmetrical lossless line then this expression would be equal to v square divided by x sin delta so this is already we have derived okay now, similarly, we also consider for uh, midpoint compensated line, uh, this it is a symmetrical line. So, therefore, for symmetrical lossless line, symmetrical that means V1 is equal to V2 is equal to V comma lossless line, lossless line, the 
expression for active power would be equal to this v square divided by x by 2 multiplied by sin delta by 2. So, which means that it is equal to 2 v square by x sin delta by 2. So, this is what the expression of active power of the midpoint compensated line. Okay. So, this is what the expression for active power for uncompensated line and this is what the expression for power active power for symmetrical lossless uh, midpoint compensated line. And we can see that there is a difference, there is a difference. In particular corresponding to delta is equal to max uh, that is delta is equal to delta max which is equal to pi by 2 uh, this p max is equal to that is what the theoretical maximum power transfer limit is equal to this. So, this represents theoretical maximum power transfer limit. Whereas, for uh, same uh, for this symmetrical midpoint compensated line, this P max P max corresponds to delta by 2 max. So, which is equal to 180 degree. So, it corresponds to 2 V square divided by x. So, this is what the theoretical theoretical maximum power transfer limit. Okay. So, now look at the difference between this and this. So, one is v square by x, another is 2 v square x. That means, the theoretical maximum power transfer limit of a midpoint compensated line becomes twice of the theoretical maximum power transfer limit of a uncompensated line with identical length. Okay. So, let me write this in a comment a remark. So, this our remark for this case study is that the theoretical maximum, why I am calling it a theoretical maximum? Because you know the steady state power transfer capacity corresponds to the maximum possible angle of this delta that is load angle and that corresponds to uh, delta is equal to pi by 2. Okay. So, that is what it is theoretical maximum power transfer capacity limit of a midpoint compensated line midpoint compensated line is twice of twice of the theoretical maximum power transfer capacity limit of uncompensated line, uncompensated line. This is our first remark, but remember this is not in general the comparison of the power transfer capacity, uh, power transfer uh, flow or power flow of this, this uh, uh, compensated line and uncompensated line, but we are uh, comparing here the theoretical maximum power transfer capacity limit of a 
compensated midpoint compensated line uh, which is SBC uh, compensated at the midpoint and an uncompensated line. Okay. So, this is what the important point that you can note down. Now, we can also plot this power plot of this uncompensated line and midpoint compensated line. So, the plot of these two would be something like that. So, suppose this is P, this is delta and this is the representation of power flow which is equal to uh, this this is basically equal to p max p max which is equal to v square divided by x okay so this is p versus delta characteristics p versus delta characteristics for uncompensated seted line. Okay. Now, in comparison to that, how would be the plot of this uh, uh, P versus delta for compensated line? So, here you know that uh, this is the maximum power okay, uh, theoretical maximum power and this corresponds to uh, when delta is equal to pi by 2. So, this is delta is equal to 0, this is delta is equal to pi. So, theoretical maximum power corresponds to delta is equal to pi by 2. So, similarly, if suppose uh, if we want to plot this uh, power versus delta characteristics uh, for this, now let us increase this oh. yeah so suppose this is this corresponds to v square by x so and this corresponds to 2 v square by x and suppose this corresponds to 0 pi by 2 and pi then then you know that theoretical maximum power transfer uh, capacity for this SBC compensated line would will happen corresponds to delta is equal to pi because you know uh, here uh, this this delta by two uh, should be equal to pi by two for maximum power for p is equal to p max. So, delta should be equal to pi for p is equal to p max for this particular line which is having a midpoint SVC compensation. Now, if we plot this, this characteristics will be something like this, okay? something like this. So, this is what this p versus delta characteristic for SVC for midpoint midpoint SVC compensated compensated line. Okay. So, this is what the difference of this uh, uh, P versus delta characteristics or power uh, uh, power flow characteristics. Uh, it is often called as a power flow characteristics of a compensated line and an uncompensated line. This is what the difference. Okay. So, here uh, this uh, uh, you can see that uh, this, this is what the theoretical this is what the theoretical this is what the theoretical maximum power and here this is is basically the theoretical maximum power which is twice of the uh, twice of the 
theoretical maximum power of the uncompensated line. It, if it is v square by x, then this is equal to 2 v square by x. So, this gives the justification how a midpoint compensated line mid or rather I should say for precise terminology that for a midpoint SVC compensated line, the theoretical maximum power transfer capacity is increased to twice of that of the uncompensated line. Okay. So, this is what are the remark we have shown. However, this uh, will occur that is our second remark. Suppose this is our first remark. The second remark will be however, the theoretical however, the midpoint midpoint SVC compensated line requires to hold the midpoint voltage midpoint voltage constant at Vm at Vm irrespective of loading irrespective of loading to hold the midpoint irrespective of loading uh, and therefore, therefore, the rating requirement rating requirement of the midpoint SVC will be will be equal to. So, this is something like this uh, we have a uh, this sending end bus and this is what uh, this receiving end bus which is considered to be uh, this infinite bus. So, we consider this is v at an angle 0, this is v at an angle delta and here we have a SVC connected. So, SVC needs to uh, provide this compensation let us say Q SVC and that uh, would be uh, equal to 2i sub Qm, 2i sub Qm. So, which is equal to 2 Qm and we know that uh, this 2 Qm is basically equal to 2 V square if I put this V square outside 1 minus cos delta y 2 divided by this line reactance up to midpoint. So, that means this is equal to 4 V square by x multiplied by 1 minus cos delta y 2. Okay. Now, you look at this this particular term which represents the maximum QSVC and this is 4 times of the V square by x. So, we need that much of this reactive power compensator rating for this particular SVC in order to achieve this theoretical maximum power twice of this uh, theoretical maximum power of the uncompensated line. So, that means, uh, this uh, to, to have this, uh, this uh, twice maximum theoretical uh, power transfer capacity of uncompensated line, we require a compensator at the midpoint whose rating should be as high as 4 V square divided by x and this is pretty high, this is pretty high and this, uh, this size itself uh, would be the main limitation uh, to, to achieve this 2 i's maximum uh, power transfer capacity 
uh, due to this midpoint compensation. So, therefore, my, our third remark could be so remark 3 is to hold midpoint voltage constant the rating requirement of SVC is 4 V square divided by x. So, it is it is very it is of very high value and no practical compensator compensator can have that much of of that size can have of that size okay so this is very important okay so uh, in uh, already i have shown you in a numerical example uh, when I, I, I discuss this midpoint compensation of a uh, long symmetrical lossless transmission line that uh, uh, whatever this, this uh, rating requirement of the midpoint compensator uh, is uh, to hold the midpoint voltage always constant irrespective of the different loading uh, that is very high actually. And uh, you know, uh, if the rating is very high, it would be uh, very costly as well. And so no practical compensator uh, with a reasonable cost ha will have such high rated. Okay. So, therefore, we need to understand that uh, although there is a possibility of that uh, higher power transfer capacity enhancement, but midpoint compensation cannot uh, ensure. Uh, this this uh, twice of this this is theoretical theoretically it is possible but no practical compensator uh, of a reasonable size and reasonable cost can achieve that okay uh, what i uh, discussed so far so therefore you have to understand that uh, in in that particular numerical example that i have discussed during that time when i discuss midpoint compensation uh, that we, we need to limit the size of the compensator to a practical value. Then the question would be how would be then the speed delta characteristics will get change. So, this, uh, this only I will discuss uh, right now and uh, this uh, will make a sense that uh, although there is an increase in power transfer uh, capacity, but it is not possible to achieve the theoretical maximum power transfer capacity. Even uh, with a midpoint compensated light because it requires a very huge amount of or very high rated compensation. It requires a very huge amount of compensation or a very high rated compensator. Okay. So, therefore, uh, so, so let us see the P delta characteristics, P delta characteristic for midpoint compensator for midpoint SVC compensated compensated line where the rating of SVC is limited to a practically feasible value okay so this is one uh, this is what we need to check so 
So, what I mean to say here is that although this uh, this is a representation of p delta characteristic for uncompensated line and this is what the p delta characteristic for uh, midpoint SBC compensated line to achieve this this uh, uh, theoretical maximum power twice of this theoretical maximum power of this uh, this uncompensated line we need a compensator which is of very high size. Now, if it is not so if the size is limited to a practical value then how would be the p delta characteristics then. So, that is something we need to understand. So, then again we will plot this is suppose p delta characteristics this is suppose v square by x and this is suppose 2 v square by x. Okay. This corresponds to delta 0, this corresponds to delta pi by 2, this corresponds to delta pi. So, we know that uh, this this uh, for uncompensated line the characteristics is like this. Okay. So, this is for this is this characteristics is for uncompensated line. Similarly, we also know that uh, for compens midpoint compensated line with unlimited rating. So, this is the characteristic. So, this is the characteristics for midpoint compensated midpoint SVC compensated line where SVC size is size is uh, 4 v square by x. Okay. Now, since 4 v square by x is pretty high value, so we may not achieve this characteristics in a practically feasible SVC uh, compensation. So, therefore, this characteristics would get change when we limit this midpoints uh, compensation size. Now, what will happen if we uh, if we can remember that my last discussion on uh, midpoint compensation that uh, if we uh, uh, consider that a practically feasible midpoint compensator or practically feasible size of the SVC, then uh, it will follow these characteristics. This midpoint SBC compensated line with unlimited size or high size these characteristics as long as it reaches its maximum limit and then it will act as a fixed inductor or it acts as a fixed capacitor. Now, how would be the characteristics of this midpoint compensated line when you have a uh, midpoint fixed inductor or fixed reactor and midpoint fixed uh, capacitor. This is something you need to understand and this is we need to plot. Eventually, this expression will derive in the latter part uh, of this lecture uh, or, or the next lecture, but uh, this we can predict right now. Okay. So, when this uh, SBC will act as a fixed uh, inductor, then characteristics midpoint cap, uh, then p delta characteristics will be th like this. So, this corresponds to SVC acting as fixed reactor. Okay. Similarly, when uh, this SVC will act as a fixed capacitor, the characteristics will be something like this. So, this is characteristics of this midpoint SVC compensated line where SVC acting as fixed capacitor. Now, I, I will uh, mathematically justify this, these two characteristics in the lat latter part of this lecture. So, the mathematical justification fication of these two 
characteristics will be done later uh, will be done in uh, next few lectures in next few lectures but you have to understand that these are the characteristics when sbc uh, this both the characteristics uh, corresponds to the midpoint sbc compensated line but these characteristics uh, will uh, be will happen when sbc sbc act will be acting as a fixed capacitor these characteristics will happen when sbc acting as a fixed reactor so if you can remember my discussion uh, in in uh, this midpoint compensation uh, with a numerical example so what actually will happen is for midpoint uh, you know compensated line uh, with a finite or phys practically feasible size uh, of the sbc actual characteristics will follow these characteristics till this point when it uh, hits this its limit and then beyond that it will follow the uh, characteristics of the fixed capacitor so therefore uh, actual plot of this p delta characteristics for it will be like this this and this so, I will increase the breadth of this line like this. So, this will be this will be the P versus delta characteristics six for midpoint SPC compensated. line with a practically feasible size of SVC. So, the characteristics definitely is uh, above the uncompensated line, but it will not follow this midpoint compensated line rather that this will follow this. And uh, this uh, illustrates that although this uh, for a practically feasible size of the SBC for a SBC compensated line, the characteristics would not be as uh, as it was for uh, theoretical uh, theoretically maximum uh, power limit of the midpoint compensated SBC line with SBC size is 4 V square by x. So, it will not be following this blue characteristics ever, but it will be this black characteristics when the size is limited to a practically feasible value. This is something one needs to understand and this is very important to understand because uh, this give this gives some sort of assessment when you or some sort of understanding when you talk about this transient stability. Uh, enhancement using SBC. Okay. So, next what we will learn over here is that we will learn the application of SBC in enhancing transient stability. Okay. So, now what do you mean by transient stability? What do you mean by stability? Stability means the ability of a power system to remain in synchronism even if uh, it uh, undergoes or even after this uh, any sort of uh, disturbance like fault in a power system or maybe that uh, very high load change or something like that or for a major disturbance. And, uh, whatever uh, the disturbance might be, uh, we can show that SVC with the SVC compensated line, the, the transient stability is somewhat improved. Now, this uh, we will do basically pictorically by considering the idea of the equal area criteria. To understand this, one needs to have a idea of equal area criteria. So, this is 
got in this is usually taught in basic power system course this is usually taught in basic power system course because I will not go in very detail of this equal area criteria, but I can show you that how an SVC compensated line can improve this transient stability and in order to understand this transient stability one needs to uh, go for the understanding of equal area criteria. So, to do so what we will do is let us consider an uncompensated line. uncompensated line ok and to do so we, we need a single line diagram here suppose the voltage is V at an angle delta here suppose this is connected to infinite bus so it is V at an angle 0 the line is represented by its reactance x. So, therefore, the P delta characteristics which is used in equal area criteria is something like that. Suppose this is representing v square by x which I already discussed and this is representing the p delta characteristic. This corresponds to theoretical maximum uh, limit that is pi by 2, this is 0, this is pi. This is basically the p delta characteristics for uncompensated line. Now, what actually happens if there is any fault uh, on this particular line? Suppose there is a fault in a particular line and the fault is of transient type. So, what actually happens? Suppose this is the operating point, this is the operating point, this corresponds to this mechanical power that is P mech. So, you know that operating point for a lossless. Uh, transmission line assuming that there is no inherent damping we are ignoring the losses. So, there would be no damping on the system that means we are ignoring the damping as well. So, this is what the operating point of this particular uh, system. Now, when the fault happens what actually happens this electrical power becomes 0, but still this mechanical power will be intact. So, what will happen there is a increase of delta or that means the machine will run in a higher speed. And suppose at this particular point this fault is cleared. So, then at the corresponding to this value of delta this you know that uh, this is what the uh, operating point, but still uh, the delta angle will increase because it is in accelerating mode and it will keep on increasing till this area which is called acceleration area which is the area for which this mechanical power was along operating in a synchronous generator. So, this is what called accelerating power. Is equal to this area which is called decelerating power. It is called decelerating power. So, suppose this area is represented by A 1 and this area is represented by A 2. So, A 1 should be equal to A 2 in order to fulfill this equal area criteria that is what is called equal area criteria ok. And this is actually well known if you understand the basic power system. Now, this in this particular diagram this area is the area which is having an importance. So, this area which is the area after this decelerating power is taken up. So, this area is called marginal area, marginal area and if this marginal area is 0, then this equal area criteria will never be met ok. So, therefore, this uh, 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 this particular system will never be stable that is what we know ok. Suppose, this marginal area is represented by a margin m 
a r ok. Now, let us see what would be the case when we have S V C or midpoint S V C compensated line ok. So, suppose this is what this midpoint S V C compensated line similar to this previous uncompensated line only difference is that where here we have a compensator which is SVC connected at the midpoint which makes the line divided into uh, two part one is this part x by 2 another is this part and the voltage is as it is this is V by angle delta and this is V angle 0. Okay. Now, we will again plot this P delta characteristics for this line and to find out this equal area can criteria similar to this uncompensated line. Suppose you know that here uh, we have this is V square by x and suppose this is 2 V square by x. So, suppose this is 0 delta is equal to 0. So, this is delta this is P as we know. So, this is pi by 2, this is pi. So, for unlimited compensator rating the characteristic is something like this, but we eventually learn that for a uh, practically feasible size of SBC the characteristics will look like this. So, that means the actual characteristics of this uh, would be something like this, it will follow this characteristic still it will hit the maximum rating, then it will follow the characteristics of a what we call that uh, fixed capacitor. So, this is the characteristics P delta characteristics for um, for a SVC with a uh, feasible size. So, for this is for SVC with feasible size. Okay. Now, suppose this is the operating characteristic similar to this. So, this is what this P mechanical. So, this is what the operating point. Now, this is what the operating point corresponding to delta. Now, if uh, there is a fault in the line, then again uh, this this uh, similar to this case uncompensated line, delta will keep on increasing till this fault is cleared. Suppose, if this point fault is cleared. So, this will constitute uh, this accelerating area for compensated line. So, this is what A 1 for compensated line and then this would be for A 2 that is decelerating power for compensated line and we know this uh, area uh, under this accelerating power and decelerating area should be equal. But what is important to see that here this is become this is be become the marginal area or the margin for which we can uh, if there is a fault there then this this fault uh, can be mitigated. So, this area is the marginal area area which is we can call it a mar c, c for here c uh, represents compensated line. So, a 1 c is basically accelerating area for compensated line, a 2 c is the decelerating area for the compensated line and this marginal area is representing by a c mar. Now, if you compare this area and this area, obviously which one is higher? This area is higher. So, therefore, we can write this a marginal area compen for the compensated line is higher than a marginal area of uncompensated line. Okay. So, therefore, we can write the marginal area of a SPC compensated line is higher than 
that of uncompensated line. So, this is very important and that is how this SVC compensated line has a more ability to improve the transient stability to accept the disturbance or to uh, mitigate the disturbance uh, during this faulty conditions or similar type of conditions. So, this is something one needs to understand. So, this we will uh, revisit again in the next lecture and to try to understand this in more detail, but I hope this is understood at, at this time being. So, we will meet again in the next lecture. Thank you very much for your attention.